As always, the beginning of the Torah, and specifically the first few parashot, are always very, very interesting, capturing stories and episodes of the Torah. And we read this week about Noah. Noah was a Navi. He was a prophet. God spoke to him. Unlike Moses, Moses was spoken to when he was up and not sleeping. And Noah was like all other prophets. He was sleeping when God spoke to him. So God comes to Noah and he tells him, you are living amongst wicked people, doing horrible things. We are going to, God says, I am going to wipe out the world and rebuild it anew through you. Noah was 480 years old when God commanded him to build the ark. And it took him no less than 120 years to build that ark. Very long time. The, our sages teach us he did so in order to give time for the world to see what Noah was doing and hopefully encourage them to do Teshuvah. God told him, take it easy. Give yourself 120 years to build it so that at 600 years old, you enter this ark. Something Noah is criticized for by our sages is the very fact that we do not find anywhere in the Torah that Moses actually prays Noah. for the world and prays for the individuals to do Teshuvah or to better their ways or that God should be merciful and compassionate. He's criticized for such. The Zer Shon gives and rationalizes for Noah why he did not. So listen to the following. The Midrash tells us, the Zer Shon brings, that God, in His omnipresence, in His greatness, in His almightiness, is able to control His anger or His display of anger on the world or on any individual. In any case, He's able to control it, except for in the case of the sin of immorality, which we know was what the sin, one of the two main sins, that this generation, the Dor HaMabul, actually was transgressing. Immorality is an abomination. Immorality constitutes of being unfaithful to one's spouse, Chas v'shalom, homosexuality. Chas v'shalom, bestiality. Horrible, horrible, disgusting things. And this is what the people were doing. It was so bad that even the animals were engaging in relations with other types of animals. Horrible, horrible things. And this was because the world was really getting down to a very low place. The people were drifting off very far from God. Now this, mind you, is not so long after the creation of the world. It's only 10 generations. It's pretty, pretty soon. And therefore, based on this Midrash, Zerashim Shon rationalizes for Noah and says, you know why Noah did not pray for the people? Did not pray for the world? Because what's the point of prayer? The point of prayer is to appeal to God and ask for forgiveness, to ask Him to show His love, His compassion, and most of all, His tolerance, to tolerate one's sin. And Noah said, God can tolerate, God can forgive, God can be appeased for all sins except for immorality. So he looked at his surrounding, he saw what people were engaged in, and he said, there's no point of praying for them because God cannot control his own anger versus immorality, to show us the severity of immorality. This is what the Zerah Shimshon rationalizes for Noah. I want to say, in my own humility, and I agree with the Zerah Shimshon, it's a great rationalization, but it's only a rationalization for Noah. Because nevertheless, we find our sages criticize Noah for not praying. What does that mean if they come in criticizing him? Even though there's a good reason why he did not pray for his generation, Chachamim said he should have still prayed for them. Why? Because we can never give up on tefillah. We can never give up on tefillah for ourselves, 
for health of an individual, for teshuva of anybody, even a world which is corrupted and is at the lowest level of abomination to God, still we're not able to give up. And sometimes we find ourselves in life, we find ourselves in very scary, sad, dangerous, depressed places. And we say, what's the point of prayer? There's nothing that can help. We learn from Noah that even though when it comes to immorality, and that's the only thing that Kiv as if to say God cannot control his anger in such a case, but the fact that he did not pray then, he was nevertheless criticized. Let's learn from Noah the power of tefillah. Let's learn from the fact that he did not pray for his surrounding, that us, that we in our own lives, personal, family, friends, community, global, have the power of prayer and we can never think, maybe I should give up on it. There's, it's hopeless, there's no help. There's always hope. If a person has the enlightenment to even think of the possibility of a positive action or thought or an optimistic outcome, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will accept those tefillot. Now the answer is different. The answer sometimes is yes and sometimes no, just like a parent. Sometimes you ask something from your parents, they say yes. Sometimes they say no. God might say no, but there's never a reason there's no such thing to resort to giving up on prayer. Because Baruch Hu bless us, that we always remember that He is the address and that there is always hope in every single tefillah we have to deliver in any case in our lives, men, famine.